everyone, it's John from What Up, and welcome back to another video. And I'm back, baby. That's right. We have a ton of Wheel of Time stuff for you coming this month, the month of December. Um, I have a lot of stuff on the docket. I've been gone for a little bit. Uh, life's been a bit hectic, but I'm back and I have some time to do a bunch of videos for the next little while. And I have a bunch of videos that I have uh, on the back burner waiting to be released. So those leaks videos, they're still coming out. Uh, expect to see one of those very, very soon. I'm doing one for each of the storylines for season three. It's not going to give too much away. It'll just tell you who the major players are, what's going on there and what we can expect. Um, we have a couple of exclusives, some to do with cast for season three and season two. We have some new stuff that's Wheel of Time related coming in the next couple of weeks as well. I can't talk too much more about it right now, but it is coming out and I'm very excited for it. Uh, we'll be doing our regular news videos, of course, and I have a brand new series that's going to come out that I've already filmed the first couple of episodes for, uh, and that is differences from book to screen because... We all know there's some major differences between the books and the screen uh, for everything. Character development, the characters themselves, the plot lines, how they get there. The heart and soul of the story, of course, is there on screen, but how they get there is a little bit different. We'll talk about all that, including the mechanics of the One Power, um, and it's a whole lot of fun. Uh, I, I really enjoyed doing that one. That'll be released over the next uh, few weeks or so. Every couple of days, I'll release one of those. There's a lot of them. Um, so all of that being said, what are we going to talk about today? Well, we're talking about a couple of different news items. The first two news items come from WantSeries.com. One is some leaked scripts, and another is a brand new casting we have, which is uh, pretty exciting. I can't wait to talk about that one. And as well as a new announcement from Iowa Productions about an immersive Wheel of Time experience. We'll talk about that I know a little bit more than what's been released in the articles, but not a ton. I'll tell you what I know um, when hopefully we can expect to see that in the next, I don't know, weeks, months. I'm not entirely sure, but we'll talk about that too. Now, uh, normally at this point, I give a huge spoiler warning for all of my videos, um, but we are talking season two castings and some stuff from the two rivers the edition scripts so i have to give a small spoiler warning for the first four books as well as the first two seasons of the show so spoiler warning if you have not read the first four books of the wheel of time series by robert jordan that's the eye of the world the great hunt the dragon reborn and the shadow rising if you've not watched the first two seasons of the wheel of time streaming right now on prime video before warned i may ruin plot points and character arcs from both of those mediums because we're talking edition scripts so it's actual plot points from the fourth book the shadow rising uh, even more all right, let's get on to the video. All right, so the first couple of pieces of news come to us via way of WattSeries.com. Now, if you're new to the fandom or perhaps new to the channel, you may not know who they are. They are the premier source for Wheel of Time news. Basically, they have released more leaks than all the official sources and all the other leakers, myself included, combined. They, uh, they really, really do drive the fandom in between seasons. Make sure you're following them on X. I've left a link to both the articles that we're going to talk about today and their X account down below in the description box. Make sure you follow them there. They post all kinds of really great Wheel of Time related uh, stuff. If you don't follow me on social media, my X, my Twitter, my Facebook are all down below. Um, I haven't been posting a ton of social media lately. I've taken a step back, as you've probably noticed. I haven't released many videos on the channel either. That's changed now. Uh, over the next uh, couple of months, you're going to see a ton more coming from me, including daily posts on social media. I promise you that. Uh, all about Wheel of Time related stuff. So if you like that sort of thing, it, it, it's there. If you don't, that's fine. Just please watch the videos. Now, when you're done with the video, of course, read their articles because I'm not going to go through their analysis, but I will talk about the meat and potatoes of the articles themselves in today's video. All right, so the very first article talks about some audition um, transcriptions, we'll say, for the third season of The Wheel of Time. Now, we've gotten these for both season one and season two, and at the time we talked at length about how accurate they could be, because audition scripts could be just that. They could be a made-up thing that an actor has to audition for to sort of give the spirit of the character or the spirit of what they're going to be playing. It could be close to what we're going to see on screen, or it could be exact. It's very rarely almost word for word, but that's what we've gotten for the Wheel of Time. So almost every single audition we've had for both season one and season two that we've had released publicly, that had been leaked, they've been pretty close to what we've seen on screen. So it's not too much of a reach to go out on a limb and say that this is likely going to show up, if not word for word, but very similar on screen than it does uh, in the readings. I'm pretty excited about that because it does mean that a lot of the plot lines of the two rivers will be essentially the same. And we know that Rape Duncan's a showrunner has said on a number of occasions that the third season will very closely follow the events of the two rivers. And he's very excited about that. And the fourth book, The Shadow Rising, is one of my favorite books in the series. And it has always been at least in the top three. It's where the series really does pick up. So if you haven't read the books yet... Um, that's where it really gets good. I mean, the first three books are good, but The Shadow Rising is where it really ramps up, at least for me. All right, so there's two separate edition uh, transcriptions here. The first one is between Perrin and a character named 
Will. At least they think the character is named Will. They're not 100% because the character wasn't named. Um, they kind of pieced it together with the conversation between the two characters as well as what happened in the books. So it starts off with the character they think is named Will sharpening a sword. Perrin says, do you know how to use that? And then Will says, well, it can't be much different to an axe, can it? See, the way I see it is, if you can't protect yourself, then who's going to be able to protect you? Is it true what people say about you? Did you really kill White Cloaks at the Battle of Falm? Perrin says, just a couple. I'm not proud of it. Will says, no wonder they're after you. So what do we do? The White Cloaks have the girls. We can't just do nothing, can we? Perrin says, come with me. Bring the sword. And then Will says, then it's going to need to be sharp. Um, pretty interesting stuff. Now, we know that Perrin is going to the Two Rivers in the second, or in the third season, rather. And we know that Fahil will be there with him, because uh, I released Fahil's character not long ago. I think it was um, just prior to the season two, episode one drop, uh, I, I leaked the uh, the actress playing uh, Fahil. And we know that she's going to be with Perrin in the Two Rivers. So the fact that he's interacting with some of the townsfolk and they're going to talking about rescuing the girls, um, it bodes really, really well for the storylines that are in The Shadow Rising. Now, if you haven't read the books, basically what happens is Perrin goes home because he hears that White Cloaks are ravaging the Two Rivers and they're after him. He feels guilty because it's his fault. Fayil goes with him and that really cements their relationship um, and uh, they, they really kind of fall in love more so during that uh, adventure and really bond. Um, and Perrin has a bunch of little side adventures while he's there he rescues some people from the white cloaks he um fortifies the town against trollocs there's all kinds of things that happen at the same time there and um i think we're going to see a lot of that on screen and there's already been some castings for season three that make us think that the storyline is going to be very very close to what we see in the books so the second audition script that we have here uh is a character that they think uh, is senbui now we did have Sen in the first season, kind of. He was announced by the Wheel of Time official accounts as Sen Bui, um, uh, an actor uh, playing Sen Bui. However, on screen, he was never really credited as Sen, and he dies in the first episode. So it's, it's one of those things. They've cast certain members, and they've written scripts for certain members, and then they kind of walk back the names later on because they realize they... Don't have as much flexibility as they would like if they're locked into a character too early. Um, so this could possibly be Sen, and then the character that we see in season one that was Sen but not Sen may not actually be Sen. So Sen says, "You're in my way, boy." And Perrin goes, "Where are you going?" Sen says, "The White Cloaks say we should return to our farms. So that's just what we're going to do. Councils have decided." Perrin says, "You can't go back. Forget the farm." Sen says, forget the farm. Are you mad? I don't know how you'll get the harvest in as it is. Who's going to reap my crops, boy? You, if I don't go back, my crops die. If my crops die, we all go hungry. Perrin says, better hungry than dead. And then Sen says, stop trying to scare everyone. The White Cloaks will protect us. They're men of honor. They've helped us more than anyone else. Certainly more than you. Now move out of the way. Now again, this sounds exactly like Sen Bui's character. It sounds kind of crotchety and old and cranky all rolled up into one and that's exactly how i kind of envisioned sen when i read the books because that's pretty much what he was he was he was a terrible old codger um but this puts a smack dab into the two rivers for a lot of season three now there were some leaked photos of perrin and some Aiel, um in some mountains around where they filmed the two rivers shots uh we talked about that probably a month ago now so we know for sure that at least um Bane and Chiad, Perrin and Fael are in the Two Rivers. We'll talk a bit more about that during my Two Rivers storyline video, which is, again, coming out in the next couple of weeks, um, because it's pretty interesting stuff. Now, the next article is... Uh, we're going to change gears a bit from the Two Rivers, but still staying in Andor, we're going to talk about Queen Morghese. Not only has Morghese been cast for Season 3, but... It's a huge named actress. This was kind of a surprise to me when I saw this, although it shouldn't have been as big as a surprise as it was, because in season two, they had a ton of really legendary actresses playing small roles. So I think that Olivia Williams, who's playing Morghese for season three, will likely only have a smaller role. Now, I speculated before that much of the Morghese storyline would be cut. We knew we'd be getting some Andorran scenes uh, because of Elida in that room with Andorran banners, but we weren't 100% sure exactly how it played play out and if Morghese was going to be there or not. 
Now we know she will be, um, but I think that a lot of the more gays Robin storyline may be completely cut or shortened, um, and I don't think we may do the whole succession story as well. I don't know. I'm not 100% sure how they're going to deal with that. So far, it seems like they're going to deal with Kyrian for a lot of the intrigue stuff because that's how they set up season two. Um, but yet, remember, they have six seasons left if they go the full eight, and there's a ton of stuff to cut. So I'm thinking what's likely going to happen, especially considering the caliber of this actress, this role will likely be a smaller role, um, and she just wanted to be part of the Wheel of Time. Or they uh, kind of called in a bunch of favors to have her part of the Wheel of Time, because this is a huge, huge get for Amazon. Um, now, if you're unfamiliar with who Olivia Williams is, you're probably living under a rock. But you probably know at least some of or all of the things she's been in. So she's an actress in the UK that was born in 1968. She started acting in 1992, and she's been in not just a lot of things, but a lot of varied things. So I'm going to list a few things here, and um, I guarantee you folks, some of you have seen some of them or a lot of them. So she played alongside Kevin Costner in The Postman in 1997. Uh, she was in Rushmore with Bill Murray in 1998, and that was a Wes Anderson film. Uh, she played alongside of Bruce Willis in The Sixth Sense uh, by M. Night Shyamalan in uh, 1999. Uh, she was in The Body with Antonio Banderas. She was in Peter Pan in 2003. Uh, she was in The Heart of Me alongside Helena Bonham Carter. Um, the big, big names. She is a huge name in Hollywood, and she's done a ton of different movies. Um, she was in The Ghost Rider in 2010. She was in Dollhouse for a couple of seasons in 2009. Dollhouse is huge. I don't know if you're familiar with the show or not. Look it up if you're not. It's amazing, and it's absolutely massive. Um, she was in Hannah in 2011 alongside Kate Blanchett. Uh, she has been in a ton of different things. Um, most recently... She was in Counterpart with J.K. Simmons. If you don't know who he is, well, he was in The Night Sky as well as all the Spider-Man movies. He's, he's, he's in those little, little movie called Spider-Man. Um, she's been in a ton of different things. Uh, most recently, I think, she's done uh, The Nevers by Joss Whedon in two, 2021 and The Father with Anthony Hopkins in 2020. Now, she is, like I said earlier, an amazing get. For Amazon. They are very lucky to get the caliber of actress she is because she not only plays every role she's in perfectly, she commands the screen and she plays very varied roles as well. She has a huge repertoire of varying different types of characters she plays and they're all pretty amazing. So I, I was really excited when I read the name. I, I don't know about you folks. Um, it, I, I'm kind of a. I, I watch a lot of movies in my house. We do. That's that's what we do. We watch television movies, especially movies. We sit down uh, at least a couple nights a week and watch a couple of movies as a family. And I will recognize her from more than a handful of movies we watched in the last couple of months, at the very least, which is to me absolutely bonkers. Either way, Olivia Williams is going to join the Wheel of Time as more gays. Um, and thank you, WatchSeries.com, for uncovering that. Now, we're getting into the last little piece of news, and that has to do with IWAP Productions uh, and a new immersive Wheel of Time experience. All right, so IWAP Productions is teaming up with two separate companies, uh, Arch District Studios and Vortex Immersion, to develop uh, what they call a new immersive adaptation of Robert Jordan's Wheel of Time. Um, so this was put out in an article by Deadline, and there was not a whole lot in the article. Like, it, it, it didn't detail what they meant by this, what was going to go on. Uh, so I kind of reached out to IWAP, and I asked them, myself because there's not a ton of details there they said they're in the pre planning stages of this and there isn't a whole lot of details they can share just yet but they said think the vegas sphere on a much smaller scale so they're going to immerse you in the world of the wheel of time using uh not just visuals but also sights smells sounds um different things like that which i for one am pretty excited about now uh an immersive visual experience like this will probably be stationary in one spot probably won't be near me i live in the maritimes in canada we don't tend to get a lot of things like that uh even concerts and stuff usually don't go east of montreal <laughs> so um if if and when this comes to fruition like in, in your area and you folks get to see it i would love to see pictures and videos and things that go on there because i've seen stuff like the vegas sphere online but i've never seen it in person because that stuff usually doesn't come near where i live now uh some of you may be asking who IWAP Productions are and um, why they're making an immersive Wheel of Time 
adaptation. Well, they're the ones that hold the rights to the Wheel of Time, and I would have to do a full, very long video about their convoluted uh, rights with the Wheel of Time and how it came to be in the timeline and whatnot, but I will say there's a lot of people in the fandom that don't know how the rights uh, came to be be or who owns them or what went on with them uh, and there's a lot of people in fandom who think they know the story behind it but realistically the story's pretty complicated and long um, i'm not going to get into it here but the coles notes is i want productions which used to be red eagle entertainment hold the rights to the wheel of time they're the reason we have the show uh they're the reason uh that we're getting the new animated movies that are coming out so any new wheel of time stuff coming forward that are not books will be coming from Iowa Productions. So if you like the Wheel of Time stuff, and I certainly do, I love the show, I love the books, I love the graphic novels, I love each and everything to do with Wheel of Time, either official or unofficial merchandise, um, it'll likely come through Iowa Productions. So I'm kind of excited about this. I, I don't know exactly what it's going to be, but I'm waiting on more information. Um, and as soon as I know anything more, I'll let you folks know as well. Now, we're going to end the video here, but before I go, I do want to mention one thing. You've probably noticed I have a ton of Wheel of Time stuff up behind me, and I just talked about loving all things Wheel of Time. That is 100% true. So if you are a fan that makes Wheel of Time stuff, if you're an artist that draws, paints, uh, uses digital art as a medium, if you create things that are Wheel of Time related and you want it showcased here on the channel, send me a message either on Twitter, or X rather, sorry, uh, Instagram, uh, or my email that you see in the About section of the channel. Um, and you can send me a couple pictures of your things. I'll feature it here on the channel. If you have a store, I'll feature that as well. I love to um, display uh, content created by other people in the Wheel of Time community. I think it's a whole lot of fun. Uh, same goes if you have a podcast or YouTube channel or you do anything else on social media and you want to be featured here on the channel, love to have you. Just drop me a line. Uh, I love doing stuff like that. It's a whole lot of fun to talk with other people who are fans of the Wheel of Time. All right. All of that being said, thank you so very much for sticking with us here to the very end. Here's to many more.